Welcome back to DIY with Dave. In this video, I'm gonna be building a dovetail keepsake box. One of the cool things about this project are the invisible hinges and latches that I use. So be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video to see how I do that. I'm going to be building this keepsake box out of maple. I have some nice rustic maple that has a lot of character and so I'm carefully picking through some of the boards that will have the most beautiful figure. After picking out my boards, I cut them to a rough length on the miter saw. And my miter saw is small and it doesn't slide like a lot of uh, newer ones do. And so with big boards like this, I'll need to cut it and then flip it over, line up my cut and cut it again. That's just one of the things that you have to do when you don't necessarily have the best tool. But you can always make do with what you have. I'll be ripping these boards on the table saw, but before I do that, I straighten one of the edges on the jointer. This will help my table saw cuts go better. Um, also, the scrap is great for other projects like cutting boards. In fact, I use the scraps from this project for an edge grain cutting board that I made as a present. From there, I go back to the jointer to flatten the face of the board. From there, I run the boards through the thickness planer to get them all to the proper thickness. I like to run shorter boards like these one right after another. This helps the project go much faster and also cuts back on snipe. After my boards are all milled up, I decide on the layout. Again, I'm going for the nicest figure, and so I pick pieces with character for all the most prominent sides. Now, I'm using a dovetail joints for this box. I, I really love dovetail joints. I think they're a very beautiful joint. Uh, they're also a very strong joint. And um, in fact, they, they've been used for thousands of years. They found examples of dovetail joints in Egyptian uh, tombs. And so they've been used for a very long time. Uh, there's really two parts to dovetail joints. The first is the, the, the tails, which look like a bird's tail or a dove's tail. The second are the pins, which are these inside parts here. So you can see it from that side. And the, the dovetails or the tails and the pins just kind of fit together. Once that's put in, uh, and glued up, that is a very strong joint. That's not going anywhere. Um, dovetail, dovetail joints are great for boxes like this. They're also really great for drawers. Uh, they create very strong uh, drawers, especially with a drawer that you're pulling a lot. Um, but they're a very beautiful joint. I think you can see kind of the design once a, a finish is applied. Uh, it can be a very, very pretty joint. And that's why I like using them. Some people make all their dovetail joints by hand. I'm not quite there yet in my skill level as a woodworker, and so I'm using this dovetail, dovetail jig from Rockler. I've used it to make other boxes and drawers, and it works really well. Uh, using it definitely takes some practice, though, and so in the description, I'll link to a video that I use to help me work through all the steps. I cut the tails first using the jig and a router, and then I cut all the pins. In between, I need to change router bits and make sure that my settings are correct before I move on. I also will always cut test pieces to validate that the jig settings are correct before cutting my actual work pieces. That cuts back on mistakes.
Now before I glue everything up, I'm using my router table to cut a groove or a rabbit in the base. Um, a bit later in the video, I'll, I'll show how I finish that off, but this just helps the process along and makes it simpler for me to attach the bottom later on. Before I glue up, I'm covering up the edges with some tape. This is to help me avoid squeeze out, especially in areas that are difficult to sand. I probably went a little overboard, but it did do what I wanted and uh, is something that you could try if you wanted to. Now if you remember, I used the router table to cut a rabbit in the bottom of my box pieces. Now that it's glued up, I'm using a chisel to make a clean corner so that I can glue in the base. For the base, I just joined two pieces together with glue and then plane them down to the proper thickness. I cut them then to the right size and then glue and clamp it. If you're enjoying this project, be sure to like the video and also leave me a comment if you have any questions on how I did something or if you have a thought on how I could do something better, let me know. Uh, also be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos that have to do with woodworking or home improvement. I've got a lot of really great projects coming and so you want to make sure to hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified as I post new videos. The top of my box is going to consist of two main parts. The first is the box pieces itself that I glued together uh, that's fit with dovetails. The second is uh, a flat piece that's really two boards joined together. I want to fit these flat boards uh, on top of the box itself or the lid top. And um, so in order to do that, I'm gonna be cutting a rabbit into the flat piece this time rather than the box itself. Once I do that, it fits pretty snug. You'll also notice that I cut a chamfer in the top just to soften it a bit. Okay. 
One of the last steps to do now is to attach the top and the bottom together. Now, uh, for the hinges themselves, I'm using what are called barrel hinges. Uh, they look like a barrel and they, you drill a hole, they sit in that hole, and then you can tighten a screw that will expand the barrel piece so that it kind of fills the space that it's in. And that creates a hidden joint. For the latches, instead of using a traditional latch, I'm actually gonna be using some rare earth magnets. They're called neodymium magnets. They're really small, but they're also very, very strong. And this is gonna do a great job of keeping the lid shut. The key to both of these, the key to the barrel hinges, as well as the key to the magnets, is to make sure that the holes line up on both the top and the base. And so I'll need to do a lot of measuring to make sure that it fits correctly. So before I finish uh, this box up, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I wanted to build it. So about a year ago, in fact a year ago today, um, we lost our son. Uh, he was 25 weeks along and he was stillborn. And it was a really difficult time for us and after it happened I felt really helpless. I'm the type of person that likes to fix things and make things better and this is one of those situations that you couldn't fix. Um, we don't know what happened, we don't know why, and there was nothing that could be done. And so as I thought about it and really was struggling to find something that I could, I could do, I decided that really the only thing that I could do would be to build my son a casket that he could be buried in. And so that's what I did. I built a casket very similar to this box um, with dovetail joints out of maple and that's what he was buried in. And after, before and after the funeral we had a lot of family visit. We had a lot of family and friends uh, send us condolences and um, really show their love and support. And my wife asked me to build this box so that we could put all that stuff, those letters, those gifts uh, into it as a place where we could keep it and remember it. Pull it out when we felt like it and remember um, our son who we still love. And um, while it's been really difficult, it's been a difficult time, we felt a lot of love and support from the people that care about us, and that's really helped sustain us through this. And another thing I think about is, is a quote I heard from, from a wise man who said that joy in our life has very little to do with our circumstances and has everything to do with our focus. And if you think about it, all of us are going to have difficult times. Nobody escapes this life unscathed. We're all gonna have challenges, we're all gonna have things happen to us that are not fair, that are not just. And it doesn't do any good for us to dwell on those events. Sure, we do what we can to fix them, but some things can't be fixed. And so for us as a family, we decided that we would focus on what was most important. We'd focus on each other, we'd focus on family, 
We focus on faith, we focus on the future, focus on the good things of the world, and that's really helped sustain us through this year. We still feel it sometimes. Uh, we still feel that pain and that loss, especially now as we're coming up on the anniversary. But again, we choose to focus on what's most important, and that helps get us through. So I hope that's something that you can take from this video, that, that even though times are tough, even though things happen that are not fair, that you can still find joy in your life by focusing on the things that are most important. All right, let's finish this thing off.